This lesson deals with our complex power system using transformers. You can find these notes in the ECE202 ebook in chapter 16, starting on page 18. The power company could save more money by reducing the magnitude of the current in the wires, and we could do that using a transformer. If you recall, we can step voltage up and current down, or vice versa with a transformer. Suppose that we take our source and hook it up to a step-up transformer and increase the voltage, say by a factor of 50. That would take our 240 volts at angle zero and step it up to 12,000 volts at angle zero. Now we'll hook up our transmission lines and then we'll have to step the voltage back down again because this is way too big. So let's just do the same thing. Let's step it down by a factor of 50. So our turns ratio would be one over 50 to one. Now we have a resonant load here that we had before and the impedance seen by these input terminals of the transformer we had found an equation for in chapter 15, and it was the load divided by the turns ratio squared. But our load here is purely resistive at 60 hertz. Dividing that by one over 50 squared is multiplying that impedance by 50 squared. So it's gonna take that 4.553 ohms and make it look like it's 11,382.5 ohms. Let's now analyze our system under these conditions. Our step-up transformer has converted our 240 volts RMS into 12,000 volts, hooked it up to a wire, and then our step-down transformer and our load, and then a return wire. Let's find the current in the wires. It's gonna be the voltage divided by the total impedance. That's gonna be the two real parts plus this, which is basically gonna dominate the summation. And then we have our imaginary part of times two. That gives me a magnitude, literally just the same value here, 11,382.89 ohms. And the angle is virtually zero. It's actually 0 0.00059 degrees. So the ratio of these two is about 1.0542 amps at angle zero. The voltage across Z equivalent, which is where our input of our transformer is, would be that current times the impedance that it sees, and so it would produce about 11,999.6 volts RMS. Now the voltage across on the load on the other side of the transformer on the secondary side is gonna be 1 50th as big. So it's gonna step it down to 239.9992. In other words, our original 240 volts, most of it's actually getting to the load now. The current in the load then would be that voltage divided by the impedance of 4.553 at angle zero. And now we got 52.711 at angle zero amps RMS. This is also 50 times the line current. As we step the voltage down, we step the current up. The power now dissipated in the load is equal to the magnitude of the current squared times the real part and that's 12.650132 kilowatts. The reactive power is still zero because I have a zero reactive part. Now the power that's dissipated in the wires is gonna be the magnitude of the current squared times the resistance of the wires. Again, one going, one coming. But now that current is about 50 times smaller. It's 1.0542. So now we're only dissipating 438 milliwatts in the wires. We had nearly a thousand watts in the wires when we started. Reactive power in the line is gonna be the magnitude of the current squared times the reactance, and that's 131 millivars. The current that's coming out of the generator is gonna be 50 times the line current. Remember, we're stepping the current down, so we step it back up to go back to the generator, and that's gonna be 52.7107 amps RMS. So very much like what we had previously, except that we had the transformer in between, we we're able to step the voltage up, step the current down. So now the power generated by the source is the voltage times the current conjugate. That's the current coming out of it, which was the 52.7107 at an angle of zero. So it's gonna change the sign of that to minus zero and multiply that by the 240 at angle zero. The product of those two putting that in rectangular form is 12.65057K plus J zero, and that's volt amperes. And again, our power generated would be in watts and it's 12.65057K. The reactive power is essentially zero, but there was a small angle, if you look back at the top of the page, if you actually were to leave that angle in, which was 0 0.00059 degrees, there would be 131 millivars that generated by the source. And of course, that's equal to what we absorbed. Let's now calculate the efficiency of transmission as the real power to load over the real power generated. And now that's 99.997%. I did assume that the transformer was ideal here with no losses but very large transformers can have efficiencies in the order of 90%. We would still see a great improvement in terms of the power that we actually delivered to the load versus what we generated, and that we didn't lose it in the wires between the source and the load. So in this particular case, by adding two transformers, we're able to cut our power losses by 99.86%. 
We had 309 watts before, and now it's dropped to 438 milliwatts. That's just an example with a thousand feet of wire. Suppose you had several miles of wire. The savings would be astronomical. So this is what the power company does. It steps the voltage up, transmits it over a long distance, and then steps it back down again. It does this to save the losses in the wires, which really benefits the power company in getting the power from the generator to the customer with the least amount of losses in the system. And this is our complex power system under various conditions, seeing how we can increase the efficiency of transmission.